Hey everybody, so let's continue the theme of mass moment of inertia, but this time let's talk about thin plates. So we've previously discussed if you have a slender bar, so this is a like a thick bar, which is a cylinder, but if you make it the radius sufficiently small, it's practically a one-dimensional object. Same story if you have a plate. Like this is a plate. It's a three-dimensional object. But if you make the thickness it's really, really thin like this, right? then it's practically a two-dimensional object. So let's say we want the moment of inertia about, say, the z-axis. So how do we do that? And then let's distinguish between mass moment of inertia and area moment of inertia. First of all, let's take this little differential mass and then its position here, r. So the mass moment of inertia is r squared dm. The units would be kilogram meters squared. Okay, but that differential mass element is like if you consider the density, mass per volume, but then the volume of that little differential mass element is like this differential area times this thickness here. So for thickness t. So for thickness t, which is very small. Right, because we're saying this is a really thin plate. So this differential mass we can replace with rho t dA. For density rho, for thickness t, and then if we make some assumptions that it's the same thickness throughout, so in other words this is a constant, and then it's homogeneous, which means it's the same density throughout, then this is also constant, then we get to take both of those out of the integral. So that's nice, right? So we can take those out of the integral. And then for the plate, if it is indeed constant density, then this is true not just differentially, but for the entire mass m for the entire area a. So if you look at what I just wrote here, move the t over on the left side of the equation, then I can replace this with m over a. And then this is basically what it breaks down to. The mass moment of inertia for a thin plate and this is the polar moment of inertia, if that sounds familiar. The polar moment of inertia. So the mass moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia about the z-axis is m, mass m over area A times the polar moment of inertia. And again, this has units meters to the fourth. And polar moment of inertia, if it sounds familiar, is Ix plus Iy, where this is the area moment of inertia of some shape. Let's say if it's a rectangle. See this, this area here? About the x-axis. So if you rotate it about the x-axis, that's what this is. And then Iy is if you take that shape rotated about this y-axis. That's this. And again, these have the units meters to the fourth. Okay, and that's how you can find mass moment of inertia for a thin plate. This is not true if it were a thick plate. This would not be true at all. So don't forget that. This is only valid for a thin plate. Can you do something like this? Okay, so let's give it a try with an example. 
So I grab these out of the appendix and I'm just going to make up a shape here. Like say there's a composite that looks like a triangle connected to a rectangle and let's make like a circular cutout here somewhere over here. So this is a cutout. Okay, so what's the mass moment of inertia of this thin plate? Let's say this is a thin plate that is um, 20 kilograms. And then we want it about this z-axis over here. So all you would need to do is about the z-axis m over a so the total mass 20 kilograms divided by the area well, let me just make up some numbers um, and this cutout is okay there just made up some numbers so What's the area of the shape is the triangle, one half base times height, plus the rectangle, base times height, minus this circular cutout. So pi r squared, I should make some radius. All right, so pi r squared for that circle. Times ix plus iy. And what is this and what is this? This is ix for the shape about this x-axis. iy is the area moment of inertia for the shape about the y-axis. So you just figure out this, figure out this, plug it in, and you got it. Okay, so let's try it out. ix for this composite, for the triangle, about, let's say, this x-axis through its own center of mass is like this one over here, which is here, 1 over 36, base height cubed. So I'll, let me jot that down over here. So, so I, x, through the centroid for the triangle is right here. Got it. But that is here, we need it to be here, about this x-axis. So we have to add extra, plus extra, how much extra? The area of the triangle, one half base times height, times the distance between these two parallel axes squared. So that would be one third of the way up. 5 meters, so 5 over 3 squared. Okay, so this is for the triangle. Now the rectangle. So the x-axis through the center of mass, centroid of the rectangle is here, which is like here, which the answer is right there. So that goes here. So that's ix through the centroid of the rectangle, right there. But we need it to be about this x-axis here, so we have to add extra, plus, how much extra? The area of the rectangle times the distance between these two parallel axes squared. So 2.5 squared. Okay, so that's for the rectangle. And then for the circular cutout, minus whatever we get here is negative, because it's a cutout. So for the circle, through its own centroid, is like here, which is right here. So that goes here. So this is for the centroid of the circle, there, plus extra. How much extra? The area of the circle, pi r squared, plus the distance between these two parallel axes squared. Okay, and then similar for the y direction, follow the same steps. So for the triangle, through its centroid is here, 
which is here in the appendix. And we got the term right here from the appendix. So we just put that here. So this is I Y through the centroid of the triangle. But then we don't need it here. We need it here. So we have to add extra plus the area of the triangle and the distance between these two parallel axes squared. So that's two thirds of four meters. So eight over three squared. Okay, so this is for the triangle. And for the rectangle, I Y through the centroid of the rectangle, which is here, which is here, which is right here. And then we don't need it here, we need it here. So I have to do parallel axis theorem from here to here. So plus extra the area of the rectangle times the distance between these two parallel axes, four plus half of six, seven squared. Okay, and then now for the circular cutout, would be negative. So the moment of inertia in the y direction for the circular cutout, which is right here, which we can get from the appendix here, which is this. So we got that term, but then we need the answer here about this y-axis. So if you do the parallel axis theorem all the way from here to here. So plus the area of the circle times this distance squared. So that's uh, eight. Okay, so that's how you would do parallel axis theorem for these thin plates. So maybe straightforward, but needs practice. So definitely practice this, and then let me know if you need help. And then otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.